Dennis, obviously the news uh, of Dean's passing is very sad and tragic for such a young man. Um, anything you'd like to tell us about your relationship or about Dean? I think yeah, obviously like a lot of people have said, he's, he's going to be very sadly missed. He was one of boxing's characters. Uh, he started off apparently in, in, in a gym just carrying a bucket and helping out and uh, he's, he's got himself into a, a very respectable position uh, inside boxing um, after a long time of uh, serving his apprenticeship I suppose but uh, it was in most of the fighters corners every time you switch television on and uh, very knowledgeable and uh, great I'd have had him in my corner with any of my fighters any time um, very knowledgeable obviously uh, on a business side you speak to him and you know, sometimes trying to negotiate, but he would always uh, come over as trying to be fair, and it, you never actually ended a conversation, even if you started off a bit prickly. You never ended a conversation with him in a in a, in a negative manner. It was always, oh, well, we'll see what we can do then, Dennis. And we always, I always ended it in a good manner, even if, it, like I say, if it started off a little bit prickly. So I thought he was smashing to deal with, even though, you know, there were some times where he were bat batting for, you know, a rival promoter or a rival uh, boxer. Um, great to work with, great to negotiate with, and uh, like I say, sadly missed and uh, truly in shock, and uh, as, as a lot of people will be, and uh, I'm sure by a lot of people, including myself and you, uh, it'll be sadly missed. Very tragic circumstances of the passing far too early of Dean Powell. I was wondering if uh, you, Richie, had anything you'd like to tell us about your relationship and situation with Dean? Yeah, I've known, known Dean for many, many years, and not just a friend in boxing, but also a friend outside of boxing. He was a, a huge Small Faces fan, and uh, occasionally he would invite me to Small Faces conventions, and we'd go along to that. And if there were some up-and-coming bands in some local pubs, he would invite me along to that and we'd go and enjoy our evenings. Uh, and he was just a, a lovely, nice guy. Um, we'd had our falling out on one occasion over a verdict against, against one of his boys. But he, ne he never carried a grudge. He was just a nice kid. And uh, he'll be very, very sadly missed. Yeah, we, we're a funny community in the boxing world. We may all have our differences, but at times of tragedy, we all seem to come together and forget, let bygones be bygones. You know, I, I can't think of another uh, situation that has been so moving in recent times. Because it was, you know, it's never a good time to pass, but it was far too early and unexpected. Um, do you have any sort of specific anecdotes you could share with us about Dean? Not really. I mean, D Dean was, was a, a bit of an introvert, really. I mean, he kept himself to himself pretty much. Um, but, but on the odd occasion we were together, he would open up and he would talk about this and he would talk about that. Um, but he was never anything spiteful about the man. Um, it was a very kind and gentle sort of guy. And uh, we got on famously, and uh, I'll miss him very, very much. I've spoken to a number of people about Dean, and obviously I knew Dean quite well myself. And one of the things that everyone said was that even when you're having a disagreement with Dean or you didn't agree, he'd always try to end the conversation on a friendly, happy note. Uh, Mick Williamson, uh, what was your relationship with, with Dean? Well, I know from the beginning. Uh, you know, I think we will both virtually start off with Frank Maloney. Um, you know. To me, like the guy was always 110. percent No matter what he done, he was always 110. percent um, We might have had a couple of fallings out and things like that, but um, really being here tonight, it really brings it home because uh, years ago, I always got invited. He used to have a table here, and uh, he'd bring his uh, father and his uncle down and some friends from um, Birmingham. And it was always the same, you know. It used to be the afternoon, and then we go out for a drink afterwards, and that. And it's uh, I don't know, it really sort of bringing it home tonight that he's not here. Um, you just can't get head around it. That's it, you know. And you know, he was the top of the range, wasn't he? Everything he done, he helped me out quite a lot. Gave me good work, good fighters, you know. And um, uh, I still can't get me head around it. Uh, yeah. Gary, uh, we're here on the tragic t news of uh, the passing of Dean Powell. You had a close relationship with Dean. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think when I was boxing, you know, we we definitely had our ups and our downs. You know, many shouting matches, but. I think Dean showed how versatile he can be because it never affected our relationship and we went to America um, before before I fought in America, we went over there for a press conference, spent a bit of time with each other and found that we had quite a lot in common, you know, and I think we got on more than ever after that and um, since I started coaching, I think he's been one of my biggest backers and my biggest helps. You uh, mentioned to me that you spoke to him fairly near to the tragic moment, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? 
Yeah, I mean, it's something that, um, and, you know, I've not stopped thinking about in the past couple of weeks. We must have missed each other about 10 or 12 times, you know, on the Monday before, because he scheduled a meeting with myself and two of my boxers, Liam Williams and, and Lewis Reese, for the Tuesday down in Cardiff. As I say, we missed each other about 10 times, but then we finally got each other in the night. And, you know, I was quite surprised because he was very jovial and very, very bright and very happy. And uh, we actually rescheduled the meeting for the Thursday. Little did I know that he'd cancelled so as he could, um, you know, do 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 this. You know, it's, it's you know, something I can't stop thinking about and it's really tragic, isn't it? So, uh, Before we uh, finish the interview, is there anything, any anecdotes or anything else you'd like to tell us about Dean? Oh, I think there's too many to mention, to be honest. I mean, you know, I think the thing that everybody remembers, you know, because I've I've told a couple of people, like in, in business terms, and they're like, oh, I, I, you know, I don't know the name. And then you get his photo up and they go, oh, yeah, of course I know him. Because he was, he must have worked every up and coming prospects corner that there is. Um, and, um, you know, he's he was such a massive influence in, in, all, in all walks of boxing. And I think he's going to be um, very, very sorely missed. Robert, we're here uh, just before the awards dinner for the British Boxing Board of Control, but we want to speak about the tragic passing of Dean Powell. As the General Secretary, I'm sure that you have some anecdotes or a relationship that you could share with the viewers to tell a little bit about Dean. Yeah, Dean was a great man, uh, and more importantly, he was a gentleman. And uh, I've known Dean for a long, long time. I first met Dean when I was training boxers at the Thomas of Beckett, and Dean was helping out in the gym there. And uh, so he was one of these people who really wanted to get into boxing. He went to speak. He went to speak to all the good trainers. He went to Terry Lawless, uh, Jimmy Tibbs. Uh, you know, you name it. Dean has worked with Denny Mancini, and he learned his trade. He never boxed, but he learned his trade, um, and he did a really good job. And he was highly thought of within the sport. And uh, he was just a lovely man. It's funny, actually, because when I first got involved in the sport, also not from a boxing background, Dean also originally wasn't from a boxing, boxing background, but as you said, he went around and learnt from the best, and despite his detractors in the early days, he sort of has achieved an awful lot. Yeah. I think we're an industry where everybody used to say, well, unless you've actually boxed, you don't know anything about it. Well, I think Dean actually proved possibly you know he, that, that is wrong uh, and I'm guilty I thought the same thing as well I thought unless you've been punched in the nose you don't really understand it uh, but Dean w proved it was that, that was wrong um, he worked his socks off to become what he was he was the be one of the best trainers we had certainly one of the best corner men we had and you know without doubt one of the best matchmakers we ever had um, and uh, you know it's, it's great you can see the outpouring of grief within the sport for one man and uh, it's a great shame um, but he'll never be forgotten I spoke to obviously a few people about Dean for this uh, feature that we're making and what's amazing is how our boxing community for all our differences comes together in moments like this and um, you know it actually does make you feel you're you're part of a group. Yeah. I think that's very true. I mean, this is a dangerous, or can be a dangerous sport. I mean, the Boxing Board of Control is renowned for its high standard of medical cover, etc. But things go wrong. You know, this is the nature of the sport is boxing and people get hurt and people get seriously hurt. But when it does go wrong, everybody pulls together. Doesn't matter what camps you're from, everybody pulls together. We all feel the same. Um, you know, to get into the boxing ring, whether you're a world champion or a four round boxer, is an extremely brave thing to do. And everybody has that something in them that, they, that the boxers understand what it is. I don't know. I did it myself and I can't actually tell you why I did it really. I did it because I loved it, but there was something else to make you want to do it. And everybody respects that. doesn't matter the standard you're boxing at, everybody respects that. And everybody respected Dean because he understood that. And although he never boxed as a professional, or I know he tried a little bit as a, when he first went into the gym with Ronnie Brown, but uh, he understood it. For some reason, he understood it. And that's, that's you know testament to him for the hard work he put in to become what he was. We're actually not at the awards dinner tonight, but uh, is anything being done to mark Dean's passing? Well, I mean, uh, the, the unfortunate thing is Dean is not the only person who's passed away this year. Um, you know, there's lots of people within the sport. It's very short. This is, this is, this is a celebration of last season. Um, what we do in the future, we don't know. But, you know, we have a Sir Henry Cooper Services to Boxing Award. He passed away. We have Denny Mancini Award. Who knows what the future will bring? I mean, maybe it might be an idea for us to get together after tonight and see if there's something we could do for Dean, even make some sort of uh, event or some sort of award for, as you've just suggested, or some sort of commemorative situation because uh, it is so tragic. 
Absolutely, yeah. We'll, we'll, obviously, we could look into that tonight. You know, it's very raw at the moment. Um, people are still in shock. Uh, let's get over that and then we can think with a calm head and do the right thing. There's no point rushing into something because you always get that wrong. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Is there anything with your official hat on, although you might say we've been speaking with your official hat, but maybe a message from the Board of Control regarding Dean? Well, I mean, from the board, I mean, you know, I'm not the board, I work for the board, but I know that everybody on the board was shocked, you know, that everybody knew Dean. Um, he, you know, he put himself around a little bit. That's how he became so successful. And everybody, there's not one person that I've heard say one bad word about him. And that is a wonderful, that's, that's a fitting tribute to, to, to Dean Powell. Chris, was tragic news with the passing of Dean Powell. I, I know you had a long relationship with him. Would you like to tell the viewers a little bit about that relationship? Yes, Dean and I were best of friends right back from the le late 80s. And um, even now after, you know, or, or the days that have gone by, it's still just a shock just to think, think of, uh, you know, what's happened. Um, can you tell people a little bit how you met Dean and what your working relationship with him was like? Yeah, we, we, we met down at the Beckett's and, uh, you know, I... I um, we, we, we met just because, uh, you know, he, he was a boxing nut. He'd come down from the, the, the black country, Wolverhampton way. And, uh, you know, he just wanted to be involved in professional boxing. And, uh, you know, I listened to him and, and so how enthusiastic it was. And, uh, you know, he, he started, you know, at the v very bottom of the tree, you know, helping out. Passing, passing the, the the water bottle, you know, cleaning the gym, you know, and and that's how people did it in those days. I mean, when, when used to be in the Beckett, when 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 the top boys sparred, you had to keep your mouth shut just in case you got thrown out, you know, and, and just to be able to watch an afternoon's uh, training and sparring at the Beckett, you know, you know, was something. Sometimes <laughs> those, those, those sparring sessions were better than some of the top shows now. Yes, I mean, for the, for the viewers, many, and you mentioned the Beckett, they won't even know what that is. Could you like to tell people just what, what the Beckett was? Well, the Beckett was the Thomas of Beckett, and, and it was the gym ab ab above uh, the, the pub down there on the Old Kent Road. And it's, you know, I would say one of the most famous, well, it's the most famous gym in, in, in the UK, Europe, and, you know, maybe the world, you know, and... Uh, you know, anybody uh, to, to, to have trained at the Thomas of Beckett, you know, was a real honour. I mean, just to, to set foot in there, you know, was an honour for anybody in the boxing fraternity. To tell the viewers a little bit, what was Dean like? Yeah, D Dean was, um, Dean was uh, really the opposite to, to what you'd think somebody would be in the boxing. He, he wasn't aggressive. He, he was a mild-mannered uh, guy, uh, very slim-built. You know, and uh, you know, just 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 full of enthusiasm, but willing to learn. And uh, you know, and uh, an expression Mickey Duff always to told us. You know, ears shut, ears open, eyes open, mouth shut. And and uh, you know, what what happened was first of all, um, Dean would would look. You know, learn a lot of Gary Davidson. Who, who was uh, formerly managed by Mickey Duff. You know, he then, you know, because of that relationship, he then, you know, got into the company of, of sort of everybody in boxing. Um, Jimmy Tibbs, Terry Lawless, um, you know, m m myself over there, George Francis uh, and uh, Denny Mancini. And, and, and he was just allowed in, into their company. You know, we, we, which was a great thing because, you know, it, you know, we were a closed shop and uh, not many people, I know that when I was boxing, ju just to go up it, um, you know, I was one of the few that was allowed up, up to Mickey Duff's office uh, in Wardour Street and, uh, you know, and Dean was one of those as well. Um, what was your sort of, have you got a fond recollection of Dean? Just, um, uh, just your, just the clo clo closeness of our, our relationship, you know. Um, you just, you know, you can close your eyes and uh, you can just see him smiling, and uh, you know, j just he was meticulous. Um, where I was rough and ready, and and that he he was the opposite to how I, he never forgot anything, and uh, you know he was a great matchmaker, you know, and uh, always had time to explain why he'd got this man, why he'd got that one. 
you know, and, um, you know, he learned so mu much, you know, for, from, like I said, sweeping the floors to, to rise into the very top job in, in British boxing with, with uh, Frank Warren Promotions. When was the last time you spoke to him? I spoke to I actually seen him uh, at a Cleverly show, and uh, we spoke a few times after after that. Yeah, and uh, you know naturally that was it, an ill-fated show for Nathan Cleverly, but Dean did did, did all the matching on, on that show. Chris, before we end end the interview, is there anything you'd like to say, or you think you've said it all? I think um, you know just to say that you know how, how sad we are. And and I'm sure if Dean realised how much he'd be been he's missed now, and how much how much people loved him, you know, within the game and w out of the game, because he had a great social life as well. You know, he was a mod. He had he had a scooter. He had a mini, and uh, you know, and you know, he was a you know a very loved person. So for him to 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 be gone, you know, so suddenly just like that. You know, it is a great shock, and 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 you know his parents and uh, his wife and family. You know, you know must be in shreds.